Okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, we have now uh, seen possibilities of change at uh, the level of society. We have seen possibilities of change at an international level. And let's uh, discuss today how, we, how could be done, what could be done at uh, an individual level. But you know that a question remains, how could we create like, relationships uh, between these three levels to make change effective? So that's the topic of today. Uh, this question will be treated by our guest speaker, Mr. Michel Laloux. Uh, he comes from France. He's a teacher in economics, uh, an educator and a philosopher of education. Um, his last book, uh, La Démocratie Evolutive, or in English, uh, the ev Evolutive Democracy, um, imagine a new form of democracy that would allow maybe the development of a, more, a, healthier, a healthier economy. And his next book, he's now working on macroeconomics, and his next book will, um, yeah, in, in his next book that will be published maybe in a few months, he has imagined a new, in many details, a new uh, international monetary system uh, that would allow, yeah, the development of a really different form of economy. So if you are interested, maybe we can give you the reference uh, in a few months. So. Thank you again to be here, and I leave you the word. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be with you this morning to talk about change. Changes, uh, individual changes, changes in uh, the whole society. That's a very important question. It's very important that we become conscious of what change is. Because it's not a so simple question. And to be aware of it could help a lot. But the first question that we have to, to ask to ourselves is, uh, where does change come from? Where, where does it come from? Does it come from the society? Does it come from the NGO? Or does it come from ourselves? We might think that it could come from the first level or the second level. But in fact, if we look at this question from different points of view, we would notice that any change that comes into society comes always from individual persons. But when, when someone starts to change something, to bring something new, in society, then we must follow with our eyes or without, with our consciousness, we must follow how it develops into the society, this new impulse, this new element that come to life in society. And you can not notice that anything that uh, comes this way in society will have, after a short time or a long period, it depends, it will have the tendency to become something that is too structured. I would say that it becomes to be old and it becomes to, to be slightly dead. You know, that's a very uh, uh, important fact, that anything that we bring in our life, in our own life, or in uh, the society, anything has the tendency 
to have a sort of sclerose, a sort of death. So we have to bring life into it at any time. But we are, I would say, squeezed into these two tendencies. Something is new, something uh, wants to come to life, and after a short time, it comes back to us as something that could be to fix. So if we want to, oh, I think there is a problem. No. So. Okay. Uh, sh shall I take my iPad and... Uh... Yeah, but we have tested before, but... No. Okay, yeah, okay. Thank you. Oh, that's why. Mm. <laughs> I see. Thank you. So that's okay, you can give your last. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. This small point that you see is an individual person. It's you, yourself. And from this person start uh, a process to bring something new in life. And now, after a short while, this comes back to the person as something which has, as I said before, the tendency to be uh, old, to become old and to be uh, uh, dead. But this process can uh, happen and always happen on different levels. The first level is what I call the microsocial. The microsocial level, this is our level, where we act as a person, as, as an individual. And this is also where we meet our friends, our family. This is the way how uh, do I be behave in my job, for instance. But then we have the mezzo-social level. And this is uh, where we have, for instance, schools, university, non-governmental organization, and so forth. So also companies, firms. And the third level is the macro-social level. Uh, this has to do with uh, what is organized in a country or over the world. And it's very important that we 
become very aware of in ourselves on which level am I now? Because there is always an interaction between the levels. If I work in an NGO, for instance, the NGO exists, has its uh, own story, and I come to work in this NGO. I bring something new in the organization. But there are the, the rules of the, of the NGO. And the, the connection between the two are not so simple. You know that if you, in any situation that you have uh, experienced, you of course know that very well. And the NGO try to have influence on the macrosocial level. For instance, in environment. So the macrosocial levels and the political levels, for instance, will have influence on what the NGO will do. But the NGO can also bring new ideas, invent a way of uh, making advertisement for her activity. So you see, it's always in two directions that the connection works. And there is also an interaction between macrosocial and microsocial micro in both directions. If you think of some uh, persons who have who had a, a a strong impact in their country. Think of Mahatma Gandhi. Think of Nelson Mandela. How one man or one woman can change a situation. But then, Look at what has happened after Mahatma Gandhi's death. You know that. And you can see that, of course, a part of the situation has changed. The English Empire was not anymore in India. But other problems ar uh, have arisen. And you can see that the, the, the impulse, the intentions of Mahatma Gandhi, uh, when, uh, once they have lived into the world, in India, for instance, there was a tendency that it becomes too fixed and not in the direction that uh, Gandhi intended to have it live. You could uh, do the same, L look at what Nelson Mandela has done, and in, uh, or Martin Luther King, or other people with the best intentions. So we see that we have a sort of squeeze, what I call a squeeze situation from inside now uh, in the direction of outside, and from outside in the direction of the individual. And this quiz situation, we experience it today quite a lot. Just think 
of uh, los indignados, yeah? the indignants. What happened in Tunisia? What happened on Tahir Square in Cairo? You see, strong forces that claim for changes. And you, you see af after a, a few months that these forces have has been taken by the, the state, the, the so-called democracy, and that it changes. And the people who wanted this change does not recognize their impulse in the in this uh, today's situation. So why is it so? Why do we have this squeeze situation? If you you have two fields that are in the macro social, two fields that are uh, are uh, creating this quiz situation. One of these fields is the, the, what I call the so-called democracy. And the other one is the so-called economy. Because my thesis is, not, is that what we call democracy is not democracy, and what we call economy is not economy. And this seems, when we realize that, then we, are, we stand at the point where we can start to imagine a new organization of society. So let's first have a, a, a short look at what I name the so-called democracy, if you accept that I say it so. What are the basis of what we call modern democracy? We, we usually learn at school and at university that there are three powers that the state has in itself three powers, or three missions, if you want. One is the governance. The other one is the laws, parliament. And the third one has to do with justice. You know that very well, of course. Mm -hmm. But it took me quite a long time to, real, to, to come to the question. And you know that when we, you come to the right question, you are very close to the answer. I don't know if you've noticed that. So the problem is to, to ask ourselves the, the good questions. And it took me a long time to come to the question that, is that true? These three powers, is that really states? Or should we think that another way? Let's take the governance. I, I see that uh, there is an E uh, missing. Hmm? <laughs> uh, governance. So this, the state. I don't know in English how it sounds for you. Uh, unitary states. Does it mean something for you, unitary states? So this is a st uh, the state, the government, that thinks that he has to solve all our problems. In France, for instance, we're very good at that. We, if there is a problem with uh, 
with uh, families, we cr create a ministry of families. If there is a problem of, uh, of the, the, the towns, in towns, we create a ministry of the towns, and so forth. And the politicians are very happy. Oh, you see, we've done the right things. So please, vote again for us. But when you look at the development of the situation, then you realize that things are not going any better. And I came to the question, is it possible to change from above down to the bottom? And my observation are, and my conclusion is that it's not possible. It's not possible, so we should give up with this hope that we have when we, when we go in, uh, to vote to uh, elect a president or a prime minister or a parliament. I think we should look at that in a quite different way. And I'm sure that this could be a surprise for you. And you could think, well, is he not a Democrat? No, I am a Democrat. Not the Democrat Party in the United States. I don't mean that, huh? of course. Huh? But what I hope is that a real democracy can appear into the world. And I say a few words about that. But I, so we, we can see that um, governance is not a task of the state. The, what we call the, Unitarian state, the central state, that's not the way to bring new forces in society. So the, the point is Who should have the executive power? Who should have it? If it's not the government. To answer this question, we must see that there are two kinds of public services. One kind is the the type of public services that is uh, that has that needs needs pluralism, and there are also public services utilitaries that cannot accept pluralism. For instance, the police. If you have an accident, you, an accident between two cars that crashes, you couldn't, couldn't imagine that one say, okay, I'll call the police X, and the other one say, uh, I'll call the police Y. That's not thinkable. You can't have two policies. You can't have two armies. So this is where states and government has an executive task. But in, in schools, for instance, 
If you look at the development of schools all over the world, you will notice that when government rules the school, it doesn't work. And the situation is growing worse and worse all over the world. I don't say that just by myself. You just have to look and read, read all the books that are published about the situation in schools. Does it mean that we should go to private schools to, have, to make a, a business of, of education? I don't mean that. I think we could develop a new type of public services. Public services that we would be ruled not by a representative democracy, not by a unitarian state, but schools that would be ruled by the civil society itself. In fact, I came to the conclusion that the executive powers belong to civil society for all the public services that needs pluralism. This, of course, as I say it, in short words, would need to be developed quite a lot to see all the implication of that. I just wanted to, to mention that so that you can imagine how we can think differently and we could invent, and I am working on that, we could invent new type of organization that's, that, is, that are ruled by civil society. That means NGO. But of course, you can't do that as only as you wish. You must have rules. You must have rules that just say how we can do that. What is the frame in which you can uh, create, for instance, new schools? I take that as an example. But that is the task of the state to give rules. But does it belong to a central state to do that? Or can it be done differently? That also is a question that I bring here but we don't have time to develop it. But we could imagine that most of the laws could be ruled, could be uh, created, organized by civil society. And when we have general laws then we would need to have votations. And these votations should be done. The, the people should have the right for direct democracy. That is, that is the minimum that we should have, as we have it here in Switzerland. Switzerland is the only country in the world 
that has a real direct democracy. So that means that you have two rights. One right is the initiative uh, uh, rights, which means that you can propose laws. And the other right is that you can say to the parliament, OK, you voted this law, but we don't want this law. And just a, one citizen or a group of citizens can ask to have what we call a referendum. So you see, it works in two ways. And this is the basis of a real democracy, but it's not sufficient to my view. Because in Switzerland, there are also this squeeze situation which I mentioned at the beginning. So you, you can't expect that only with direct democracy you can have a real democracy. We, mo we, we must go a step further and think in a new way these tr three powers. So, if we I think we have seen, we have just a, a, a short view of this question concerning the so-called democracy. And now let's, let's go to, uh, to the next step, which is economy, the so-called economy. I have seen in all the book, uh, books about, uh, that deal with economy, I have seen that it always starts with the offer and demand law. You know that. Huh? And when I taught economy, I started, when I, I started to ask myself, but is that the first law in economy? Is the real law for economy? And I re realize that we have not a clear concept of what economy is. And you can read all the books that uh, you find or hear all the lectures that are held in at university, and you will see that it always starts with the needs and offer and demands. I never start a, a seminar on economy with that, because I think that when we start with this points, which does not really belong, the second one, the, the uh, offer and demand, does not really belong to economy. Or it belongs to economy just in a small part of economy. I can't develop that now. Maybe we, we, we will have time in the workshop afterward. But We should reverse completely the principle and come to a real concept of economy. And this concept, we, we can reach it when we come to the question of value, how we create value, and how these values are exchanged be between two peoples or two firms or one firm as a client, uh, one firm and one people as a client, as a customer. So we have here the production 
and three. This is where real economy comes. But there are things that today have a deep effect on economy, but which do not belong to economy. These are four factors. One has to do with real estate. So that is with ground and buildings. If we had time enough, we could develop how this twist economy very deeply. Just think, when there is speculation, for instance, here in Lausanne or in Geneva, where the price of land has arisen to such an extent that it, is, it has a, a deep effect in economy. Because the people who want to buy a land to build a house, then they have to get a salary so that they can pay this, this land and the house. And in Switzerland, it's done the way that you can have credit for the whole life. So you, you, you own a house, but you pay for it the whole of your life. And you pay interest for, uh, for that. And that goes into the bank. So that is a reason why the bank are rich. It's not the only re reason uh, of the, uh, that the, the bank are, are very wealthy in, in, in Switzerland. But this, this is one aspect. So the price of the land and the price of the house has an, a direct effect on the salaries. So it has an effect on the price of the products. You see how everything is in connection in economy. So one of the things, if we want to think in a new way, is to ask ourselves, how can we have real estate outside of economy? The second is money. This is a very actual question. You know what is happening with the money, with euro, dollars, and all the money. You know that we have come to this situation that 90 between 90 and 95% of the exchange of money in the world are not for real economy every day. It's billions of dollars or billions of euros that is thousand billions of dollars that every day goes from Tokyo to uh, Frankfurt, from Frankfurt to, to Wall Street and so forth. But not for real economy. And you know that this has a deep impact on environment. This is one of the main reasons of the environment situation in the world. Because we don't include the cost of pollution, for instance, into the price of the, the products. So we should think of solutions how money could be put outside economy. Money, you might be very surprised, 
But money does not belong, should not belong to economy. And if we had time to discuss about that, and we can say a few words in the workshop, money, in fact, is a right. A right to buy something. And if you consider money as a right, then you, you can imagine other ways of organizing the banking system. And we see today that the banking system could collapse. You know that uh, you've heard of the decision of uh, the uh, central banking, uh, how do you call that? This Banque Centrale Européenne. Huh? European Central Bank. Hmm? You know that it was uh, Thursday. You were already here. But the European Central Bank take the decision to buy all the debts of the states. So that means that through the state, the bank, banks, we, the private banks will be helped. And the, the, the debts of the, of the state will increase, but the uh, European Central Bank will buy these debts. So we come to a complete crazy situation. And of, of course, we just push the problem a little forward, but the problem still remains. It, it's not the Spain the government that has the problem now, it is the central, it has been taken into the Euro European Central Bank. So we have completely uh, unhealthy situation. And everybody knows that. But the squeeze situation makes that we have to do it this way because we cannot think of another way of dealing with this situation. And this, this is one of the most important problems nowadays. As I said, it is at the source of the environment problems. And another problem that uh, has also, that belongs to this situation, also what we could call the equity capital. You see, when through shares, through stakes, you can have the hand on a firm. And when you have shares of firm, you can sell this share, and you, you can earn money just by selling at the right moment the shares that you own. You don't know anything about the firm, but you buy these shares and you sell them. So, as money has come into economy by selling dollars for, and buying euros, for instance, the shares have come into economy. But if you look in detail, the shares are not an, something that belong to economy. The capital that you bring into a firm after a few months is not there anymore. Did you re realize that? That the capital has been spent to buy machines, to buy desks, computers, and so forth. 
So the capital is not anymore in the firm. I just sketched that. We, we would need more time to develop that point. But think about it. Think about, follow with your eyes where the capital goes and how it comes out the firm. But the shareholders say, I have it, that in my hand. So there is a problem with that. And this problem has a deep impact on, on, uh, on environment. Because if uh, a manager, and I know managers who wanted to have uh, to take measures for environment in their firms. And the shareholders told them, OK, you want to do that, so goodbye. We don't need you anymore. So the pressure is very strong. And this, this belongs to the squeeze, squeeze situation that I described at the beginning. And also, this pressure that is on equity capital, this pressure on the firms, has also an effect on works. And works jump into economy this way. And it is submitted to the offers and demand law, which has to do with speculation. Offers and demand has always to do with speculation. So you have to sell yourself to get a job. And that is what is been being taught to people. Learn to sell yourself. So you become a product when you do that. And that has a deep impact on the whole healthiness of society. It belongs to the illness of our society that work has jumped into economy. And we should imagine now, we should, should start imagining uh, to, to develop our imagination to how could we take work out of economy and make it possible that, it is to, that we consider it only as a right and not a product. And if we would look at the increase of the costs of health in our modern society, we would see that it is connected to this question. The more work will be in economy, the more the people have to sell them, not, not sell their production, but sell themselves, the more sickness will grow into the world and the more it will cost to the Medicare in United States, for instance, and all the, the, the organization that take the, the healthness in charge. So 
So you see, we have four factors that should be taken out of economy. And this is what I call the cross of economy. This is one of the most important questions that we have to solve if we want to get out of this squeeze situation where the individual is stuck, where each of us is stuck in, in this t situation and say, I would like to change the world, but can I do it? How can I do it? It is this situation that the Los Indignados, les indignés, and the indignants, they are all in this situation. There is a, a good will, a strong will to change the world. It's carried by young people. But we have no concept, no concept to go, how to go to the source of the problem, how to go to the source of the squeeze situation so, th so that we can change it. And go to the source of the, uh, this situation is go to the question of the so-called democracy and go to the question of the so-called economy. And now maybe you can uh, have a clearer picture why I named that so-called democracy. Because the the concept that we have of de democracy will never bring a real democracy. We see that. We've experienced that through years. And we see that every time we elect a new president, we hope that we will have a, a, a new solution, that it will be different. And we see that the world goes more and more into the wall. So we will really have to change our mind and change our concepts of so-called democracy and so-called economy. So I would like now to change something on the computer. And it doesn't work. Yes. Now it is. So, changing. Changing myself. It does not appear. I don't see, I don't know why, but it should be written changing myself. Changing myself is changing on three levels. The one level is the micro level. How can I change myself? And this is not a, a quick process. It takes a long time. It is a process that should be in evolution. How do I develop myself so that I can have a real effect on the other levels. And if we look at the mezzo, mezzo change, we see that it should be, uh, we should change ourselves, our co cooperation process. How do we co cooperate? How do uh, does one NGO cooperate with another NGO? For instance. So one key word for that is cooperation. 
And if we come to the macro social level, I, I don't know why um, there should be inner revolution there. Inner revolution, that would be the key word for changing myself on the macrosocial level. So that means that I sh must take the, what lives on the macrosocial level, democracy, so-called democracy, and so-called economy, that I change my thought, that I make a complete revolution of my thoughts in myself. That is what I call inner revolution. The word revolution is missing here. So you see, changing myself is changing on three levels. How do I start evoluting myself? The way I behave, shall I say. How do I change the way I cooperate with others? And how do I make the inner revolution that is a revolution in thoughts, in concepts? So this is what I wanted to, to say about changes. And you see that change is not a simple process, that it is a very complicated process. And the best thing we, we can do if we want to change the world is to, to deal with this question as you have started to do these three days here in this Congress. Thank you very much. Thank you.